Hello. So today we're going to continue looking at um, the analysis of one quantitative variable, but we're going to start making inferences on that. So right now our parameter of interest is going to be mu, and today we're going to look at how to calculate a confidence interval for um, that parameter mu. So we looked at an um, the last chapter, Ways to Calculate a Confidence Interval, and we talked about how we would have to use a sample estimate and add and subtract some margin of error. So we're going to do the same type of thing now, but we're going to change our data to be specific to one quantitative variable. So when you think about um, the information from sampling distributions that we've talked about in videos past, Remember that ideally we would love to use sigma, which is the population standard deviation, to estimate um, variability. But here, because we don't have sigma, because to have sigma we would have to have the entire population, we're going to have to substitute sigma with the next best thing, which is s. And so that substitution will change our formula from standard deviation to standard error. So we have a generic formula for a confidence interval, which is a statistic plus or minus a margin of error. Now, though, we'll make it more specific to a confidence interval for mu, which is going to use a statistic plus or minus um, t star times standard error. So right now, because we're estimating mu, we learned in the information from the sampling distribution that a good estimate of mu, or the statistic that's used for that, is going to be x bar. And then we add and subtract what's called um, a t star, and we'll talk about what the t distribution is in the next video, times standard error. So this is where we're making that substitution for sigma. So if you remember, we had sigma over the square root of n. Now we will substitute s, because we don't know sigma anymore, and divide that by the square root of n. So after we calculate this confidence interval, we're hoping that it contains mu. So we're not positive that we'll be in there because it's going to be a form of inference. So we're going to use this sample data to create an interval that we hope mu is contained within. The rest of the language that we use in terms of calculating a confidence interval is going to be the same as what we had in Chapter 2, where we call a confidence level that percent or how confident we are in the procedure that we used. And so whatever percentage you have is going to be your confidence level. So for example, if I had a 95% confidence interval, 95% would be my confidence level or how confident I am in the procedure that I used. And remember from chapter two that 95% means that 95% of the intervals calculated will contain the parameter of interest and 5% then will not. So here, because our parameter of interest is mu, if I had a 95% confidence interval, 95% of the intervals would contain mu, whereas 5% would not. So in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about um, what the t-distribution is and where that t-star comes from, and also how to calculate a confidence interval from you.